I'm sure you've heard the term container queries. So right now we're going to see what exactly container queries are, how they're useful and how you can use them in Tailwind CSS. Consider a scenario where you have a blog and you want to display an ad, something like this, that you're open to guest posts. You would want to display this card somewhere within each blog post or something like that. Now let's say you have a sidebar and you want to display the same ad here as well. Since the sidebar is narrow, you would like to change the appearance like so and not include the image because otherwise it gets too long. Now the content of the ad is the same, the appearance is almost the same. So you should actually be able to create an ad component and be able to reuse the same thing in both places. But there are two main differences in the appearance. In the wider card, you have an image and it's not present on the narrow one. And then on the wider card, the button is small. It's just wide enough to show the text within. But in the so narrow, here, you cannot use media queries to change the styles because the styles don't change based on the entire screen size. Instead, it's the styles change based on the container it is placed in. That's where we would use container queries. Let's learn how to do this in Tailwind CSS using this very example. So here I have a simple page with a main section and a sidebar. So right now, this is what it looks like. We don't have anything yet. So let's create an ad component that uh, we can display in both the places. I've created this ad.html, which has the exact same thing that we saw earlier, a heading and a paragraph and a button. Now this is the appearance we saw on the right side sidebar. Similar to media queries, we're going to follow the mobile first approach. That is, we design for the smallest uh, width first and then go wider. Now, since I'm not using any framework for this demo, I'm just going to include a simple script that will help me import this HTML file into index.html. You don't have to worry about this because I'm assuming you're using a front-end framework like React or Vue or a back-end framework like Laravel. So you will be able to include this component the way your framework includes. I will just uh, use this method right now to include the add.html. And I will include the same thing within the sidebar as well. So you can see that we are actually reusing the exact component, the same content. So yes, now we have uh, the same appearance on both the main container and the sidebar. Now, let's see how using container queries, we can change the appearance based on the container size. Tailwind CSS as of today, that is version 3.4, does not have container queries included within the main framework, but it does have a first party plugin that is de developed by the Tailwind CSS team itself. So let's first install the plugin. Let me open the terminal and I'll say npm install Tailwind CSS slash container queries. So once this is installed, you'll have to open your Tailwind config file and require it here. So this is the most important step. If you miss this, then it will not work. So here say Tailwind CSS slash container queries. So let me close this. Now in container queries, to change the style of any element based on the width of its container, you have to first include this at container class on the parent element. So it's not included on the child element whose styles you would want to change, but instead on the parent element. So here I've added at container. Let me add the same thing to the sidebar as well. Now you can add it onto any parent whose width you want to query. Now, once I've added this, let me go inside the component and change the styles. Now, if the width of the container is wide, we would want to show an image, right? So let me first add an image here. I'm going to paste it here and let me add some class like, you know, limit the height, say H40. 
Now, obviously, it will appear in both the places because we haven't yet used container queries. So what we would want to do this is we want to hide this image if the width of the container is narrow. So very similar to what you would do in media queries, you would do something like uh, you'd say hidden and then Excel block or something like that, right? So it's exactly the same. Just instead of Excel, you add a at. So you're actually querying the container instead of media. So if you remove the at, notice that it says at media. The moment you add Excel, uh, sorry, at, it says at container. So you're querying not the width of the screen, but instead the width of this container, both of these, right? So if that container's width is lesser than Excel, that is uh, 36 rem, then the image will be hidden, else it will be shown. So let's see if this is working right now. And yes, perfect. We have the image shown here. We don't have it. So note that this is the exact same component. We are able to reuse it only because of container queries. So now we want to display the image uh, next to the div. So let's use Flexbox. We'll say flex item center and maybe use a gap of six. Uh, we don't have to say at Excel flex item center because it actually doesn't make a difference if this image is hidden anyway. This is the only element. So that's okay. We can ignore it. Let's see. Perfect. We have the image exactly the way we want. Now we only have to change the styles of this button. So let's come down to this link and here we will say, um, so this is block by default that is on the smallest screen smallest container size it is block in style but for screen sizes sorry container sizes larger than excel we want to change that to inline block okay so that's it now you see using container queries you are able to achieve two different appearances based on the width of its container and not having to create two different components for this reason alone you can check out the documentation for this on GitHub for Tailwind CSS container queries. You can refer how to install and how to require it, exactly what we did right now. And here, in case you have multiple nested containers, just adding at container will be ambiguous. So you can use named containers. So you can name it main and then maybe within that container, you have another container uh, for so you can use the names this way and avoid the ambiguity. You can of course add arbitrary container sizes like this if you're not happy with the available container sizes which are so on. So it starts from XS which is 20 rem and goes up to 7XL which is 80 rem. Usually this is sufficient but of course uh, you can even change the configuration to include something really small like 2xs or something like that i hope you enjoyed this video if you liked it do share and yes this example is available in a github repository which is linked in the description below bye bye thank you for watching hit a like and share this video ahead if you enjoyed watching this don't forget to subscribe below and turn on the notifications so you won't miss a single video from tyrus